Hey guys, it is a Christmas miracle. We are going to do some MTG Finance for today. So, Bazaar Baghdad, this card has gone up. It is associated with another YouTuber, Rudy from Alpha Investments. And he did get some criticism from the vaunted MTG Finance community. However, he confirmed that he didn't buy any more of these, but making a video does impact the price of a card. Even not making a video will impact the price of a card if people find that the card is becoming less and less common. People had 5 to 10 years to buy this card. It is in vintage. It's not directly affecting even legacy, to be honest. Maybe some random EDH deck wants a copy of this. However, at the very end of the day, it's not something that the majority of Magic players will ever need. You will never need this card. And you especially don't need four of them. So complaining about the price and saying, oh my goodness, Rudy spiked the price. Oh, I was, I just, I was so close to buying one of them. And all of a sudden the price went up. I mean, you had plenty of time to buy it. And the people who have the money to spend $1,000 or $1,200 on a Magic card, they have this money too. It's not, not a problem for those people. All right, talking about Legends. Uh, Arena of the Ancients. I have this one in Chronicles. Like I have a lot of this card in Chronicles. I don't know if I have any Black Border ones because they were worthless until recently. One of the great things about having a lot of old cards is this is the ideal card to have a lot of. These older Legends, Arabian Nights, they were pennies. Now they're worth 50 bucks. Like is this for real? Like, you can see the spike. I probably have this. It's still a great buying opportunity out there. There's a lot of older collections that include Legends, Arabian Nights, uh, even all the way. I would say Urza's Legacy seems interesting. Anything reserveless or older, uh, Urza's Legacy, Urza's, uh, Urza's Legacy, Urza's Saga, and Urza's Destiny being the last bunch that were. Pretty sure it's the last bunch on the reserve list. Mirage is good. I mean, you just have random stuff on the reserve list from Mirage. Like just randomly, this is on the reserve list and randomly one day it spikes up in price. So I like it. I like these old cards. I feel like that's where to go. I wouldn't advise buying boxes other than buying it for fun. I wouldn't advise buying standard or modern. I'm not going to GP Houston in protest. But if I went to GB in Houston, I would sell out my complete modern. Right now, I'm just going to keep it because who cares? I mean, Fire Layer is going to be reprinted. I know. Noble Hierarch is going to be reprinted again. I know that. I have lots of them. I don't know. Anyway, Academy Record Rector, also on the reserve list. And this card has been spiking like crazy. Something kind of interesting to know about these reserve, reserve list foils. The foil goes first because there's less copies of them. And then the regular one goes up as well in a similar percentage almost. So this card has doubled pretty much overnight. It's a good card. I don't want to say it's a bad card. It's a good solid card. But is it $60 solid? I don't know. I mean, it's on the reserve list, right? So if I had to classify old magic cards that you would want lots of just because the chances are there's something good in them, I would classify it as the Urza block or older. Anything above the Urza block is not interesting. And it used to be Ravnica, Future Sight. Tamagoyf is below $100. It's like $98 for the Future Sight one. None of this is interesting anymore because you are going to get killed on a reprint. Okay, interesting story. As for Toad, it is going up in price. I believe this is due to Standard. I'm not really sure. I don't play Standard anymore. <laughs> I just speculate and collect. So a lot of you might ask, am I still going to make MTG Finance videos? Yes, we will. We'll have a good healthy mix of uh, finance video and drama, but it just so happens the drama is very spicy right now. And I do want to get everyone's skeletons out to dance before New Year's. And then New Year's will be a drama slash. So a lot is happening. In, as many of you know, I'm opening a store. The store is heavily relying on Presley and someone else. Uh, Presley has been sick recently. I believe her sister also has the flu. Therefore, uh, we have not made any progress in the store. And it's holidays, so people have off on holidays. 
So, hmm. I'm hoping to have the store ready for GP Houston in case you want to hang out, but I'm 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 still I don't want to go to GP Houston because most of the stuff that Wizard of Coast has done has made me very upset at them and I don't want to mean any support, right? Like if I go and somebody goes, they might be like, "Oh, okay, I'm going to go to see you." But I would I don't know, I don't mm. So anyway, this is a card that I love. It's just a very good, it's my type of artwork that I enjoy. And it is $21 from Pennies. And again, it's just these old legend cards. I remember that, what's that, Palgrin Falcon, a Palgrin Drake or something? Like it's the 1-1 one, one blue for one and a blue. Attacking doesn't cost it on tap. Even something like that as is not bulk anymore. That's not bulk. It's a terrible card. It's been reprinted several times. I think 5th edition, I've seen it in 5th edition or a whiteboarded edition. But you might ask, why? It's old. I mean, today today we found out, well, today being a few days ago, we found out Unstable is going back to the printer. I mean, these things have just been printed into oblivion. From RTR on, there's no set that I can say, hmm, Maybe minus some of the Modern Master sets initially, right? When the print run was very low, but none of the uh, the new ones. That's why something like this, which sucks, can be quite valuable. It's not because that it's amazing. It's because there's very limited copies of them. In comparison, like your dragon, I, Draco, I have a ton of these dudes. I have a ton of them. And now they're 15 bucks. Like, who knew? And that's the key. The key is not the key is supply side. Given the massive reprintings, the so aggressive reprintings of current magic sets, the only thing of value will be these older cards. Do they have to be on the reserve list? No, but like it would be better if they were, but just having them be old is fine. Like Spirit Link, which is reprinted a bazillion times on Legends, I think it's like twenty dollars. I have like I don't know how I'm gonna sell them, but I, I would imagine I have like a couple hundred copies of Spirit Link for 20 bucks, like from Legends. Like, I don't remember where I saw the artwork, but when I first saw the artwork, I wanna say it was in a booster pack, but it doesn't make sense. Why would they put a common in a booster pack? I wanna say Mirage booster pack, but that doesn't make sense. Why is a common in a booster pack? Anyway, Spirit Link, oh, maybe it was an uncommon time. And Spirit Link was a very good card back in the day, like when no one knew how to play Magic. It was one of my favorite cards, so I collected them, and collected them, and collected them. All right, now let's talk about the big baddie, which is the Underground Sea. So this card has not gone down in price. I've always said that it never will go down in price because of EDH. I'm not so concerned about its current price point due to, uh, let's say, Legacy. I don't think Legacy is, Legacy is getting more, quote, support, but I don't feel like Legacy has any... It's going to die if it's not already dead. Like the, the big problem in Legacy is the land. You only have X amount of land, and you divide X amount by some number. You have less than that, and that's all the people who can play. That's it. There's no one more players. I guess they could play like Dread, but then the, they run into the same issue with there's only X amount of Lion's Eye Diamonds, and it's also on the reserve list. Or they can play like a really bad deck. So my point being is, um, I think that at the end of the day, it's kind of funny. It truly is funny, the prices, and just looking at it as a casual bystander. What goes up and what goes down is not always logical, but the one constant is low supply. You cannot buy Iconic Masters and hope to make money on it because the supply is too high. Same with Unstable. If they're reprinting again, why would they limit the reprint? Wouldn't they want to print as much of it possible? So anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.